Hey, this is Zach from How Chu. Today I'm going to show you how to set up, configure, and use your RetroFlag GPI. Now I know a lot of people haven't gotten them yet. Uh, don't lose hope. The manufacturer is releasing more. I know the first batch sold out pretty quickly. Even if you don't have it yet, I'd give this video a watch because it'll tell you everything that you'll need in addition to the GPI in order to get things running. So uh, let's get started. Okay, this is everything you're going to need to set up the GPI. So you'll need the GPI itself. Three AA batteries, I recommend rechargeable ones, and IMH batteries, and I'll go over that in a little bit. You'll need a Raspberry Pi Zero or Zero W computer. I recommend Zero W because it has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, which I'll get to in a bit. You'll need a micro SD card. Um, I recommend 16 gigs or higher. Ideally, 32 gigs would be great. And you'll need some sort of USB adapter to plug the micro SD card into your computer. Now, one quick note about the Raspberry Pi Zero that you choose. So this is the one you want with no header. They also sell ones that have a header attached and you don't want this. Um, the header is used for connecting like hats and cables to, but we're not gonna be doing that. Um, in fact, the pogo pin system that the GPI uses won't work with the headers. So if you bought one with a header, you need to either buy a new one or you can desolder all these pins and use a solder sucker to uh, remove all the solder and then pull it off. So uh, make sure you have no header. All right, now let's find out what's in the box. So, I have some instructions. They're kind of confusing, so I'm going to show you how to do everything. Of course, the GPI itself. Oh, whoops. All right. It also comes with a screwdriver that's reversible. I'm going to use my own in the video because I have one that's a little bit easier to use, but you can use this um, for attaching all the screws. Then you'll have this USB cable. This is a DC barrel jack to USB cable. So you can actually plug this in up here and then you can plug this into any power bank or anything you want. And then you can use this to power the GPI from like a portable power supply or something instead of using the internal batteries. And of course, some screws and other little bits. I put this in this container. It doesn't come like this. I thought it'd be easier for you guys to see it. Okay, so how this works is there's a cartridge on the top and then ultimately the Raspberry Pi computer will go inside of here. And then when you slide it back in, it makes uh, contact with all these pins and that's how everything works. So I'm just gonna walk you through the steps to assemble it. Okay, now before you start, make sure the power switch is in the off position. Remove the cartridge. It'll actually pop open. See, this is the logic board that makes contact with the Pi. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this little micro USB data extension ribbon cable that came with the uh, GPI and it's gonna go into the data port. And the data port is the one that's closer to the center. Um, this is the power port, you want to put it in here. And this will allow the GPI to communicate directly with the uh, USB like a hub instead of having to use the GPIO pin header for everything. Okay, next we're going to go ahead and put this into the housing. The ports are going to face up. One other quick note, make sure when you're assembling this that the, the uh, micro SD card is not in here yet. Okay, next we're going to attach the IO conversion board. That's this guy. And it uses this pogo pin system. So each of these little pins is spring loaded, which is kind of cool. That way you don't have to actually solder anything. And when we put this down, each individual pogo pin will make contact with each pin on the, the header on the, on the pie. It's pretty cool. So you're gonna wanna route this little ribbon cable over the top. Okay, and before we attach the screws, you're gonna wanna attach this little ribbon cable. And if you've ever taken like a phone apart or anything like that, it's the same deal. So just carefully push it, the, this connector forward gently and then slide the ribbon cable in right under it. All right, so once everything feels like it's nice and flat and in place, then you push this connector back down gently. All right, there's this little rubber door that allows you to access the SD card. You gotta make sure that this is in place here. And then just snap the housing back together. And then put the four small silver screws in here. These are Phillips head screws. You know what I'd really like to see is instead of using a Pi Zero, using the Pi Compute module, a lot of people don't know what that is, but the Raspberry Pi Foundation makes this really small Raspberry Pi 3 that has no ports on it and no Wi-Fi, and the idea is that you'll connect it to another board that contains all that circuitry and all that logic, but it's just basically like a stick of RAM. I think I actually have one. Yeah, here we go. So this is the original Raspberry Pi 3 you might be familiar with. This is more powerful than the Zero that we just put in the GPI. And this is the Raspberry Pi 3 compute module. 
I believe this is like a so dim stick of RAM. I'm not really up on RAM these days. So it'd be cool if, if Retro Flag for the next one just had a socket that this would slide into and snap into place. Then you'd get more computing power and it's just easier to put together. You wouldn't need pogo pins, but I digress. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how to install RetroPie and then when we're done, we'll finish the uh, hardware assembly. After putting the SD card in your computer, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and go to the RetroPie downloads page. So if you go to retropie.org.uk slash download, also, I'm gonna put a link to the full setup text and photo version of this in the video description if you wanna follow it step-by-step. Step. So go ahead and download the Raspberry Pi Zero disk image. And while that's downloading, we're gonna to need to download something else. So if you go to etcher.io, then you'll be able to download this program for Mac or Windows. And this is what we'll use to actually flash that RetroPie image onto the SD card. So click download and install it, and then you can go ahead and open it. Okay, so after it's done downloading, go to select image, select the image you downloaded, go to select drive, and select your SD card reader, which is this one. Click continue, and then click flash. Okay, while that's flashing, we'll download the patch files. So the case comes with these patch files that basically replace your Pi's existing config.txt file and a few other things um, that'll allow it to route video through your GPIO header, for example. So anyways, Go to download.retroflag.com, find GPI case, click download, and then I'll download the patch files. So if you unzip those, then you'll see these are the patch files. Okay, now once it's done flashing, it'll automatically eject it. So you need to go ahead and remove the SD card from your computer and put it back in. Okay, so whether you're using Windows or Mac, go ahead and open Finder or Explorer, whatever you wanna call it and go to this drive that mounted, which is called boot. And inside of here, you can see these are, this is the root of our SD card. Um, first, I'm gonna go ahead and help you set up Wi-Fi. So if you have the Raspberry Pi Zero W, it has Wi-Fi and you can throw a file in here with your Wi-Fi config. So you're gonna wanna open a text editor. Um, you want a plain text editor like Notepad. Don't use one like that has rich formatting because you just need this to be a plain text file. I use Sublime Text, so it's free for Windows and Mac and I highly recommend it. Okay, so this is what you're gonna have to put in your file. I know this might be hard to type in the video, so um, go ahead and check out the video description and you can see the link I put there. So um, you're gonna go ahead and put your Wi-Fi network name here and then whatever your password is. Okay, and then you're gonna wanna go ahead and save the file on the SD card in the root directory, WPA underscore supplicant dot CONF. Make sure the file extension is dot conf, not dot TXT. So go ahead and save that. Now, one last thing, in order to enable SSH, which is the way that we're gonna connect remotely from our computer to the Pi, it's disabled by default. So we need to create another file in the root directory that's just empty, and that file needs to be called SSH. That's it, no extension. And hit save. There you go. So now when the Pi boots, it'll look for this WPA sublicant file. It'll use it to connect to Wi-Fi. It'll enable SSH. So that's all we have to do there. Now, the next thing is to install the patch scripts. So if you're using Windows, you can go ahead and copy the entire directory from that you downloaded and paste it into the boot directory. And then inside of here, double click install patch.bat, which is a batch file, which is Windows only. Um, if you're using a Mac, you're gonna have to manually install the files. So if you're using a Mac, go ahead into patch files and just replace the config.txt in the uh, root directory here. To overwrite it and then under overlays copy these two files into the overlays folder okay so now that you've installed RetroPie, go ahead and open the little sd card door here and put your sd card in it'll go uh, label face up close her up now aha so this goes in here just like that um, add your batteries so let's talk about batteries for a second if you use standard like amazon batteries these disposable alkaline batteries then you'll only get like two, maybe two and a half hours of playtime tops. And believe me when I say you will forget to turn this off and you'll leave it on your table for like an hour and then half your batteries are gone. So I absolutely recommend picking up some rechargeables. There are a couple different kinds of rechargeable batteries. Um, generally, the best known ones are called Eneloops and they're made by Panasonic, formerly I think made by Sanyo. Um, and they're pretty high capacity. They're relatively inexpensive, but apparently these IKEA batteries, as I mentioned in my last video, come off the same assembly line. They're exactly the same, made in Japan. Um, there are a lot of people that have done tests on them. And again, these are the Lada 2450s specifically. There are some Ladas that are alkaline ones and they have some crappier ones, but 
if you buy these, these are the same as the Eneloops. And instead of, you know, 12 or 13 bucks for a four pack of Eneloops, you can get a four pack for seven bucks from Ikea. So I definitely recommend picking some of these up. I think a lot of people are going to be doing battery mods and installing lipos in here and cutting everything up um, and adding some protection circuitry, which will be cool. So I'll definitely showcase that after I've seen some of those projects. But for now, I honestly think these work pretty well. You can throw them on your charger, get a couple sets. This will not charge them just to just so it's clear. There's no charging circuitry inside of here and it's really hard to charge things that are basically in series. So batteries that are in series, they're basically connected end to end. And so you add up the voltages from each one and then, but you, the capacity remains the same. So when you look at these chargers, you'll see that it's always individual slots. They're not connected end to end because the problem is it would, they would charge unevenly, which would lead to uh, damaging the batteries or, you know, fire. So um, it's not going to be possible to have these connected end to end and then also charge them. You need like a single cell battery that like a LiPo that'll go in here, lithium polymer battery. Um, with to have charging circuitry inside of here. So again, this will not charge batteries, but you can buy a couple sets, throw them on your charger, throw them in your bag when you're going. And if your batteries die, swap them out, get home, throw them back on the charger. Don't get me wrong. Battery mods are cool. I'm definitely going to be doing one, but there's just something about having to plug into here and then you need another LiPo that you're going to pull out and you're going to have to plug it in somewhere else or else you're not going to be able to play it right away. And so, I don't know. I think these work great. So I highly recommend picking some of these up. I've linked to it in the video description if you want to check it out. So whatever batteries you choose, go ahead and put them in and turn the GPI on. And it will take a minute to boot up, which is actually kind of cool. You get to see all the text and everything. Now, the first time you boot it up, it'll ask you to configure the controller, which I'll go over in a second. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to install the shutdown script. And so how the shutdown script works is when you toggle the switch, it sends a signal to the Pi that says, hey, safely shut down. Because again, you can't just rip the batteries out of it, turn it off or just, you know, pull the power because anything that's being written to memory at that moment will become corrupted. And if you don't shut your Pi down properly, a handful of times is all it really takes to corrupt it and you have to reinstall everything, which sucks, trust me. So we're gonna install a script on here that will be able to read the input here uh, as being on or off. And then it'll, when you toggle it off, it'll actually send uh, the safe shutdown command. Okay, now the first time that you turn on your Pi, it's gonna ask you to map the controller, which is actually the buttons. So just go ahead and map each one uh, corresponding to whatever it shows on the screen. And then once you run out of things to map, go ahead and hold any button down, like the A button for a few seconds and it'll skip it. Um, and then when you get to the end, if it prompts you about a hotkey, just uh, select yes when it, when it asks you, and then you'll be able to boot into uh, RetroPie. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and connect to the Pi so we can install the safe shutdown script so that the button on the top will work and it'll safely shut down your Pi when you want. So um, make sure you're on the same network as your Pi. Uh, one other thing I should have mentioned earlier, the Zero doesn't support 5G networks. So you're gonna have to make sure you're using a 2.4 uh, gigahertz um, Wi-Fi network, which is like just the normal standard one. Don't use a 5G one. So make sure you're on the same network and then you're gonna go ahead and connect to the Pi uh, by opening either um, a command prompt or terminal, depending on if you're using Windows or Mac. So go ahead and do SSH Pi at RetroPi, where Pi is the default username for the Raspberry Pi, and then RetroPi is the default host name that the RetroPi install created. And then when asked for the password, the default password is Raspberry. So now that you're in here, I recommend changing the password to something more secure. So you just do PASSWD. Enter the old one and enter a new one. Okay, so we have that done. Um, now we're gonna go ahead and install the script from their GitHub. So you're just gonna copy and paste the following command. And this will do a wget, which it'll get this script. It's a shell script, it'll execute it and it'll do everything you need. And then press enter. Okay, while that's running, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to add ROMs. So. There are many different ways to do it, and I'm, I have a link in the in the setup guide on all the different ways you can that you can uh, add ROMs. But um, so for Mac, I can go ahead and there will be a network drive that will show up here, and then I can go ahead and select RetroPie, and then go to ROMs. So these are all the systems that it emulates by default. So when you have your ROM file, um, I'm not going to tell you where to go ahead and, and get you know 
copyrighted ROMs from. I have a guide on how you can get some legal ones and kind of reference um, the different types. But uh, once you get your ROMs, then you'll just drop each one into the corresponding folder here. Uh, on Windows, it's a slightly different process. Again, check out the, uh, the linked guide, but it's still, you can do it over the network share. Okay, it looks like the safe shutdown script uh, finished and it rebooted automatically. So go ahead and reconnect after it's done booting up. Yeah, it'll actually, it might take like an extra minute or two to boot up now. Okay, so the last thing that we need to do here is we need to go ahead and expand the file system. I'm not sure if their script does that automatically, but what that does is it tells the Raspberry Pi, hey, we have like a 16 gigabyte SD card in here. Go ahead and allow us to use all of the 16 gigs, not just the, the portion that the file system currently takes up. So to do that, you just you can actually do that from the, um, the menu inside of RetroPi, from the actual, uh, like from the um, GPi, but uh, you can also do it on the command line here. So we're just gonna do sudo, Raspy config. That stands for super user do. Basically means like I'm an admin. Run this command as admin, like the highest level admin you have, like root. And then Raspy config is the Raspberry Pi configuration. Okay, and you're gonna go to advanced options, select expand file system. All right, it's been resized. Click finish, and then select yes to reboot. And then you're done with everything you need to do from your computer, other than adding ROMs. So I'm gonna go ahead and use. Super Tank as an example, this is a, a free, legal, free um, game from mamedev.org. So this will run on main. So I'm gonna download the ROM images. Okay, so when you go to add your, your ROM file, not all of them support zip format. So um, it's, safe, it's safer to just to unzip them. So um, MAME in particular actually does support zip files. So uh, if you had like an NES ROM, it would be whatever the game is .NES once you unzip it. And then you would just put that directly into the ROMs directory. So I'm gonna take Super Tank. I'm gonna leave this one zipped because MAME, uh, the MAME emulator that RetroPie uses does support zip files. And I'm just gonna go ahead and copy it over here. So let me go back to network, RetroPie, ROMs, and MAME. And you can see in here, there are actually two different uh, MAME directories. So these are two different emulators for MAME. So uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and use um, MAME libretro, put this right in here, and then reboot the, uh, the GPI. So you can actually just turn it off now using the uh, safe shutdown button and it'll shut down safely. And then you can turn it back on and then your ROM will be there. Once you have a ROM for a system, the system will automatically show up and you can, you can scroll to it to play. This thing has a really small screen and I definitely recommend installing a different theme for RetroPie that can handle it. There's one called GBZ35, which was made uh, by somebody on the pseudo mod forums for the 3.5 inch display um, Game Boy Zero that they made. And it works really well on small screens to make things more readable. So I put a link in the video description for how to do that. And um, it's, it's super easy and it'll make it way more enjoyable and much easier to use. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I certainly enjoy making them. And if you did enjoy it, be sure to give it a like and subscribe so you can see more great stuff. And as always, thank you very much for watching.